Hi, folks. Uh, so I'm Paul Dudley. I'm going to be talking about uh, streaming CDC for ClickHouse. Uh, so we'll go a little bit of context of what we do at StreamCap, which is relevant to how we think about uh, CDC, uh, an overview of, uh, of, of our business a little bit and our architecture, and some specific learnings for our connector we built for ClickHouse, and then uh, a little kind of bonus on how we use ClickHouse at StreamCap as a part of our application. So um, I'm co-founder and, and CEO of StreamCap. Uh, previously founded a, a batch ETL company called Gravity Data. Um, my co-founder and I did. And um, that was actually kind of where we got the inspiration for, for StreamCap. So I wanted to give you a little context on kind of who we're serving with our application. And uh, that plays into considerations we had for building, uh, building a change data capture uh, for, for ClickHouse. So um, as I mentioned, we were uh, doing batch ETL. Uh, so we typically worked with data teams. Um, these are folks who are using batch ETL, kind of modern data stack uh, applications typically. And uh, like I say, our inspiration for StreamCap was we started to see more people who wanted to uh, go into lower latency use cases. Uh, they wanted faster data. And um, generally, the, the kind of first thing they did after trying to do micro batching and things like that was you know, try and stand up Kafka. And um, we tended to see that uh, they'd run into challenges with connectors. So they'd say, oh, great, there's, a, uh, there's an open source connector for, for my, uh, my destination. And then they'd find out it doesn't actually support um, their use case. And they end up spending development time on that connector. Um, and then they'd also find out, as I'm sure many of you know, that uh, it can be hard to manage distributed systems. Um, and months later, you know, they would end up with uh, production data pipelines, hopefully but still a lot of overhead. And again, not necessarily something that you know, every business is equipped uh, to, to manage. So what we set out to do with StreamCap was make that process a lot easier for folks. Um, a simple version of what we do is like uh, Fivetran for streaming. So it's a SaaS application, and uh, you, know, you can, at the simplest level, authenticate a source, database, and a destination, and be streaming in, in minutes. And um, we started to hear more folks who wanted to stream data to to ClickHouse, um, we'll come to that in a second, but basically just a little context, I'm sure many of you know uh, what we're talking about here, but uh, when I'm talking about uh, CDC or change data capture, specifically referring to uh, log-based replication from databases, so uh, you know, reading from the transaction log uh, and uh, sending that to a uh, destination. And um, a little bit on why we're doing that, you know, I think traditionally you, can't, you can only pick two of good and fast and cheap but uh, CDC is pretty good across all, all fronts, right? It's real-time data from, from the change log. Uh, it's generally minimal impact on the source database. And uh, you get some other advantages, like having all of your historical data. So um, what, we've, what StreamCap is built on is something that if you all are you know, building your own architecture, it's probably familiar. We're um, built on open source projects like Kafka and Debezium and Flink. And you know, we support a number of database sources using Debezium. Um, it's a great open source project for, uh, for uh, CDC. Uh, we're not gonna spend too much time on the source side of things. Um, we send to a bunch of different destinations. And um, as I talked about, we'll, we'll kind of focus on ClickHouse today. Um, we started, so again, our customers tend to be a little bit more oriented toward uh, data warehouse kind of workloads. And, um, and so that's kind of the, the, the audience that we're, we're serving. And, when we looked at the existing connectors that were out there for uh, streaming data to ClickHouse, one of the common things we found was they're generally a bit more optimized for log data, where maybe you have a single large table or a couple of tables. And so things like manual table creation are not such a big problem. Uh, but again, if you've got dozens or hundreds or thousands of tables, uh, having manual steps involved in table creation or uh, handling different data types and, and, and some of the challenges here uh, can be really, really challenging. So, these are some of the problems that we set out to solve with, uh, with our ClickHouse connector. And uh, we'll go through these in a little bit more detail. Uh, so on the data types, um, if you're using Debezium, there are some Debezium-specific data types that are very useful, uh, but are not well handled by the existing connectors that we saw. And so we want to be able to get your, your time timestamp-related data, you know, better handling of JSON, and then um, you know, more generally than just Debezium, better handling of semi-structured data like nested struct and, and uh, nested arrays and not having to do post-processing to, to deal with that. 
So um, we built into our uh, connector native support to uh, transform these into uh, the ClickHouse data types that you see here. And um, another aspect that's been really important for our customers for, for CDC is having the appropriate metadata uh, to support deduplication and transformation after landing the data and also just generally diagnosing issues. So when we're sending data in with our ClickHouse connector, uh, we're adding a timestamp for when the event is created at the source, uh, when we receive it in our connector, and then some operation related um, uh, events as well as a stream cap partition which is more useful really for uh, troubleshooting uh, issues. But ultimately that allows us to support upserts and uh, better downstream analysis and modeling and uh, debugging. And then um, I'm sure a fairly familiar thing for a lot of you is if you have upstream changes to your databases, um, often that causes a broken, broken pipelines or lost data. So uh, what, uh, what we did with our CDC connector is um, if you've got additional columns, we'll automatically add that into the, uh, the table and destination. Uh, if you have a changing data type in a column, we'll uh, add a new column, so uh, column underscore new data type. And um, if you've got new tables you're adding, we'll automatically add those into, into ClickHouse. And then um, another aspect that we see in our customer base is sort of a mixed preference of how they want to send the data in. So kind of naturally coming out of your CDC data, you've got all of your change events. And some folks want to append that into ClickHouse. And it supports a bit higher throughput. It also means that you can retain all the history for your, um, for your source data, which can be useful for auditing or uh, time travel type use cases. Uh, but it does require that you need to do some processing to get to a current state view. Um, and then the other is upserts, which is fairly familiar for uh, data warehouse users and um, automatically creates that final state view when you're inserting the data. Um, so a little bit simpler in terms of uh, management. Uh, so we support both with our connector. And uh, the main difference in ClickHouse actually is just which uh, merge tree engine you're using. So for insert, we're using a merge tree engine. And um, again, the main thing you have to do there is use a materialized view to get the, the current state view and kind of clean up out of date records. And for upserts, where um, first of all, it requires that your source table has a primary key. And then uh, we're using replacing merge tree engine. Um, there's one caveat there that uh, um, that's an asynchronous process. So if you want to get the, uh, the final state view, you want to um, just make sure in your query logic, you either have something that's implicitly getting you the latest query, uh, sorry, the latest record for that particular, uh, uh, that record, or use the final modifier in your queries, which will ensure that you get, uh, get the latest data. And another aspect that's not ex explicitly part of the connector, but that's been very relevant for our customers is the ability to do transformations in the stream. So um, this can be fairly simple things like handling PII, masking it um, to, dealing with more complex semi-structured data. So I mentioned in the connector we handle some semi-structured automatically, but uh, we can only support one level of nesting there. So if you have more deeply nested data, um, you can use transformations, uh, typically use Flink for that to, to unnest it further. And then we see folks doing joins and aggregations and uh, routing. Uh, one of the common things, our customers typically are using Snowflake uh, as a kind of starting place, and then they tend to, um, you know, they're replacing sort of Fibetran with, with Streamcap um, to, to take the slowest part of their process out, and then that pushes the latency down to Snowflake, and then at some point they find that if they're doing something customer facing and they have latency requirements or cost concerns, then they're ready to use something like ClickHouse to serve those more near real-time use cases in a more cost-effective way. And so we're seeing more folks start to do routing uh, to multiple different destinations um, and doing some of the transformations in the stream so you have a consistent data model across multiple, uh, multiple destinations. And um, you know, that's a little bit about the, the data pipelines. Um, I think it's also interesting maybe for, for all of you to, to hear about how we actually use ClickHouse as a part of our application. So uh, again, we're built on Kafka and Flink and Debezium. We have a ton of real-time data that's being produced by our application, which is really useful for us operationally and for our customers. And we want to build that into our application. So, um, specifically, if you're looking at the pipeline status in StreamCap, 
and you can have latency. Um, you want to see your latency in real time. Again, it's super important for us operationally. Uh, similarly with alerting, we want to be able to see you know, what's happening in real time. And uh, we want to provide metrics where we're doing aggregations over a number of different time scales uh, in the application, both for pipeline health and uh, billing and things like that. And um, when we started the company, we kind of initially uh, set out to do this with, uh, with an Elk stack uh, using OpenSearch specifically. And um, it, was, uh, it was not great, <laughs> frankly. Uh, so we, I think we did, I won't say we did all the best practices, but we did many of the best practices for uh, getting the most out of OpenSearch. And um, ultimately, it was still very slow. It was operationally problematic. Uh, it was uh, hard to get the data modeling that we wanted out of it and uh, was prohibitively expensive. So it's sort of really clear that we were not going to be able to use that solution. And um, so we looked at ClickHouse as, as kind of the first option there and found it was, it was great. So we switched to um, ClickHouse as our um, you know, engine behind the metrics in our application. And you can see a little bit more of the, the architecture there. You know, we're processing billions of records a day uh, from, our, uh, from our data pipelines and um, ultimately you know, had a great experience with um, you know, sub-second responses, which were a requirement for us, um, much, more, much lower costs. And uh, we started out managing ClickHouse open source ourselves, um, but uh, you know, that's not our core business. And we, we switched to, to ClickHouse Cloud, which, is, which has been great because our engineers can focus on you know, managing Kafka and Flink for our customers and, and not, uh, uh, not managing ClickHouse. But uh, it's been great. They've really uh, appreciated the, um, you know, the latency and alerting and things like that we're able to provide with, with ClickHouse. And um, a little bit more on how we, how we do that. I, mean, I showed this, uh, this architecture before. So we're actually using our own connector in insert mode to, to stream data into, uh, into ClickHouse. And um, we're using a materialized view on top of that to create the different aggregates that you saw on the screenshot there. And, um, and then we use a, um, you know, use a, a TTL to, to delete the um, data when it's no longer relevant. So we want to keep it around for a little while if we need it for debugging, but ultimately we want to, don't want to keep you know, a year's worth of, of log data um, just, to, just to provide charts in the app. And uh, yeah, that's the, the summary there. So a couple of useful links, hopefully. So we wrote a more detailed blog on the ClickHouse blog on TDC. So there's uh, code examples and, and things like that in, uh, in that blog. Um, my co-founder actually gave a much more detailed talk at the ClickHouse meetup last year uh, in London on our move from open search. If you're interested, that's on YouTube. And uh, yeah, check out StreamCap as well. But uh, yeah, open up for questions.